Welcome! In this video we're going to look at using JavaScript and the Fetch API to make HTTP requests to the WordPress REST API. So Fetch, like XML HTTP request, is not actually part of the JavaScript ECMAScript standard language, but it is a standardized web API that we could leverage using JavaScript. Now what we're going to do with it is very similar to what we did in the last step. We're basically going to make a request to a WordPress API and we're going to pull the posts in and display them on the page, the latest, the latest five. So this looks the exact same as the last one, but the code behind the scenes will be slightly different. So here we have our code and you could see right from the start, the setup is a little more complex. We're using Webpack and we have everything distributed down into or bundled down into this distribution folder here. So the reason we did that is that in essence, it's basically just the same index.html, which will look the same as the last demo, our CSS, which is the same, and then this one index.js file. However, because fetch is a newer standard, I'm going to import in a polyfill, and this stands for the Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, and you may have heard of st such standards such as the DOM. Well, Fetch is another one of them that they are working on. So because the browser support is not there fully, if you're just playing around with it, it is fine. But in this demo, I I have included a polyfill that you could use as well if you want to do it in more production code. So you should look into that if it's something that you're using in production. However, if you're just playing around with this and getting started, if you comment out this line, you don't need Webpack to run it. You could just run this like any other file as well, but because we're importing that, that's why we have this setup. Other than that, you could see the setup is the same. We've got our API root, so this is going to point to any site and you could swap this out with your own site if you're testing. And then we are initializing the listing of posts here. Notice that we've got our API root and then we just plug in the rest of this. And again and again, I'm saying this, we'll get into depth on how to do more custom requests, but we could see posts per page. That makes sense. We're going to get five. And then this is using the promise architecture of chaining the then call once the fetch is done we're going to take that response this is also using the es6 fat arrow function so this is going this response is going to be a parameter passed into this function here and basically we're saying if we don't get a 200 status code back which means if it doesn't say okay then log out what that is and then stop the process Otherwise, then go ahead and take our response, format it into JSON. So remember, we looked at having to convert things into JSON manually and what that process involves in order to be able to work with it in a native JavaScript object. So this is going to be built into the Fetch API. It could do this automatically for us. And then once we have that back, oh, let's update that on the fly, then we could go ahead clear out the posts and then render them to the page. And the rendering action that is happening is the same as with the other example. It's basically just saying for each post, go ahead and render it. And then the code below basically just makes up the HTML, the anchor tags, it makes up the content markup, and then it appends it all to the page, to this main article container that we set up here. So that's all that's going on there. This is all just basic JavaScript. So coming back to the fetch example overall, if we don't get any response back, so not saying it's a 401 or a 500 timeout, if none of these come back correctly, then we'll catch that and display whatever error is going on there. So with this, you could do a lot. You could start making different requests. You could change this. And again, we'll learn about how to customize that more, but you could already start playing around with this code. And depending on your use cases could work out of the box, or you might want to have this polyfill as well. But this is a pretty good look at fetch and I'm a pretty big fan. And, and look forward to it evolving because it's a little bit cleaner and more modern to work with than the XML HTTP request. So that wraps up our example of looking at fetch and next up we'll look at a jQuery example of this.